All right, welcome back. This is Dog. We're taking a look at uh, the newest water body here released for Fishing Planet. This is um, June 15th, 2022. Uh, you see, you can kind of see Octuba hanging out way over there, but uh, you can see this part of the map is, is, is you know, fresh, fresh territory for, um, for Fishing Planet. Although, uh, I will say that it will, in terms of fish species, it will feel a little bit like Octuba River. Uh, so this is actually in Mongolia. I'm going to get a little help here on pronouncing the name of this river. Selenga. So the Selenga River, we'll go with that. Um, some things to note here. In this video, I'm really just going to talk about what we have on the river. Um, talk a little bit about the requirements to get there. The fish species that are there we might go dip our toes in just kind of look around probably won't do any fishing in this video uh i'm hoping to do a you know a series of two or three videos in a row here just in terms of like introducing this new water body something i like to do when new water bodies come out in any of the fishing games that i'm playing um or have played now it's worth noting that uh, if you're new to the channel i am primarily i would say a russian fishing four player in terms of which game i spend the most time in but I like to dip my toes in other fishing games as well. And one of the interesting things to me about this is as we uh, dig in to the Selang Selanga River, a lot of the fish species that you're going to be going after are fish species that you'll be very familiar with if you play Russian Fishing 4. The big addition here uh, is the Taiman. I think they call they, they refer to it as the king of salmon or something like that in, in this in fishing planet and of course we've been fishing for tom taman in russian fishing for for a long time now on different water bodies and in and to be truthful it's sometimes a fish that you try to avoid because of how big and strong and frankly at times nasty they are depending on what gear you have so i'm really interested to see how Fishing Planet handles the Great Timon and uh, what it's like trying to catch it on different uh, uh, different equipment that we have. So, but that'll be for a future video. For now, let's just take a look at this. Uh, one thing that was interesting is it is level 48. Uh, you can tell from the picture here. Let me make sure I'm not covering this up. I'm not. I may just take my turn my camera off here in a minute. But. Um, Level 48, and it appears as though there's going to be a boat there, which makes sense uh, to be on a boat on the river, especially if you're going after something as nasty as a Timon. But um, we'll see how that plays out. Travel cost is going to be $12,000. Um, the, the advanced license is going to run you $8,000 per real life day. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Um, expensive, but not too bad. And... Um, I think the, the standout piece of information here is that it's level 48. Honestly, I, I wasn't expecting that. I, I figured it was going to be higher level again. And, I mean, I'm only level 52, so 48 is pretty high for me. But if you play a lot of Fishing Planet, it's a good chance you're much higher than 48. So um, not something that you have to work towards, something that you can play from day one, again, if you're at least level 48. Now, what gear will you have? Uh, what baits will you have access to? All that is 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 a little different, um, but in just in terms of getting there, level 48 will do ya. So that's good. Um, I think the you know the last maps that came out were well, you've got the Congo River, which is 75, but we had the trio of uh, South American maps, 58, 68, 58, 63, and 68. So um, this is a good bit lower. Uh, and by the way, it's worth pointing out if you do play a lot of Russian fishing for as I do, I mean, you know, think about where Russia is on this map, which certainly would be north of Mongolia. Um, we do have the Octuba River in, uh, in Russian fishing for, and so that, that's where obviously the fish species becomes very familiar if you've played that game, uh, minus a couple of things here. And I, I expect that as we look at the fish species for the new river, very similar level range. I guess my point is that there's a lot of areas here. If the if fishing planet wants to, um, they could they could have more maps in in this part of the world. Um, 
underrepresented um, underrepresented area compared to other parts of the world um especially if you look at north america at this point south america even and there are a few right here in western europe however let's look at the fish species all right again just making sure i'm not blocking anything i'm not all right let's scroll to the top here we have the amur bitterling uh and one thing that i'm sort of noticing Anytime a new map comes out for Fishing Planet, uh, one thing that I'm always paying attention to is what is the potential for bottom fishing? Maybe float fishing to a degree, but mostly bottom fishing. I like spin fishing. In fact, I think if sometimes that's the reason why I might choose to dip my toes in Fishing Planet, I think they do a pretty good job with spin fishing. But I personally enjoy, generally speaking, uh, bottom fishing a lot. So at least in other games. In Fishing Planet, it's sometimes been good, sometimes it's been a little weird, but, um, so as we're going through these, that's kind of what I'm thinking about, but we've got the Bitterling, it looks like that's only float or bottom fishing. The Arctic Grayling, and again, although it looks a little different, these are definitely species that, if you've played RF4, you're going to be very familiar with, uh, probably all of them, or just about all of them. So look at the list of prefer preferred baits for the Arctic Grayling. We start to think about, okay, grasshoppers and crickets. Um, those are certainly available at a lower level. Mayflies are as well. So all three of those baits are things we could try even without the DLC or without being high enough level to buy some of the most recent ones. Small minnows, common minnows, obviously something we can use. But I do think that Fishing Planet often leans towards spin fishing, at least in my opinion. So kind of pay attention down here. We've got the narrow spoon, single spoon, nano spoon, spinners, and then mini crank, which I believe might have been... Mini cranks may have already existed. We can check in a minute. But I know that <clears throat> from looking at the DLC for this map, um, mini cranks are a big part of what you're getting with that DLC purchase. By the way, I'm going to do a separate video on exactly what comes in the DLC associated with this river and try to uh, try to look at it to see kind of is it worth it or not, you know, um, which obviously the answer to that will be different for different people. But um, but mini crank is interesting. Uh, that might be one of the things that we try in a future video is how well do mini cranks work here. Um, I also you know, I don't think they've added trolling to Fishing Planet. I want to say that you could troll. I may have this totally wrong. I'm not a Fishing Planet expert by any means. But I want to say that you could troll in um, the standalone Fishing Planet game that a different company was authorized to make. I don't even remember what it was called now. I think it's pretty much dead at this point. They might have added the ability to troll there. I still don't think you can troll here. So I think it, it, would, it would be manual spin fishing. All right, next is the Baikal Amul, if I'm saying that correctly. Again, the Amul, we've seen that at the Tunguska River map, uh, different Amul types, whitefish type species. I think this is what you would call that as a whitefish. Yeah, whitefish. So it is in the salmon family. Uh, it looks like at night they're pretty active, according to this. Um, which I'm trying to think about on Tunguska River and RF4, if that's, the, if that's the case. I feel like you catch them in the morning and evening. Not sure about overnight necessarily. Caddisfly larva. I think that caddisfly larva might be a higher level bait. Bloodworms. That's still on there. Bloodworms was not here. It was uh, not there either actually. Oh yeah, it is. Bloodworms was on the Amur. So uh, bloodworms, redworms, caddisfly larva. I feel like caddisfly larva might be worth spending a few of your um, whatever those are called coins, fishing planet coins, I don't know what you call them, uh, and trying out the caddisfly larvae, they may just actually be really good here. I don't even know what side swimmers are. So it, either either that's new or I've just not noticed them before. Night crawlers, of course. And again, small minnows and common minnow. So that's been the case for a couple of these fish. It may just be worth using small minnows based on what we've seen so far. All right, next let's go down to the burbot. Again, uh, we've seen burbot before in this game. Burbot are certainly a very common fish species in RF4 as well. Uh, here we're seeing preferred baits, a small cut bait, crawfish cut, medium cut bait, shiners. There might be other baits, I would guess, that you could catch burbot on. Um, so you also can use shads, grubs, and crankbaits. 
Uh, similar, by the way, preferred lures on the Amul as there was on the Arctic Grayling. A little different. I mean, you don't have many cranks listed on the Amul, but I need to keep talking about those as well. Anyway, burbot, as in other examples, you, you know, soft baits, that kind of stuff. Even crankbaits, I guess, will catch the burbot. Burbot, for me, or at least in, in RF4, tend to be overnight. Uh, burbot are hunters that are active primarily during twilight and prey primarily on other fish like young northern pike, trout, and perch. Sometimes they may feed on frogs, snakes, birds, and insects. Yeah, I mean, I caught a lot of burbot on frogs. All right, uh, common dace is going to be a really small thing. Semolina. So we've got a couple of fish that, is that common? No, so the common minnow actually go for more meaty type baits. But the common dace, you might occasionally catch them on some of the smaller lures, it looks like. But semolina, oat flakes, grasshoppers, crickets. So they kind of have a little bit of everything on there on the, on the common dace. Um, common roach, which of course we've seen in Fishing Planet before, but we've definitely seen a lot of that in RF4 as well. Any sort of Euro or Eastern Euro-centric fishing game uh, will have the roach in them. Dough balls, pearl barley, lots of good baits. No spinning baits listed for the roach. Then we have European perch. This is going to be more of a predator. You can catch them on worms and small minnows apparently, but I'm more familiar with perch reliably going off certain lures. The humpback whitefish. So again, I kind of like this, that we're getting several different species of whitefish. Uh, definitely reminds me of Tunguska and some other water bodies in RF4, but uh, the ability to use things like caddisfly larvae again, or other worms, uh, small minnows, common minnow on there again. So I'm, I'm really curious, like what if we throw out small minnows? How many different fish species can we catch? And, you know, will it really be determined by where you're fishing with them on uh, how consistently you're catching one thing or another? Because small minnows has been, la has been listed on so many different fish off of this list. And I guess the different minnows often are. In Fishing Planet, you know, uh, minnows and cut bait and stuff like that are often very reliable baits, it seems like. Um, just as we're going, we should also notice that we do have unique grayling, unique omuls. We have a unique burbot, unique dace. We've got the unique roach, perch, unique uh, humpback whitefish. So that's always a big deal is not only what trophies can you catch, but what uniques can you catch. Same with the eyed. Of course, eyed have also been on other maps previous to this one. Think about some of the Eastern European maps and you'll see some eyeds. Minnows, grasshoppers. I always think of grasshoppers and crickets when I think of eyed, but obviously there's other stuff that works as well. Some lures is uh, also eyed are predators. Doesn't really say anything. Uh, om omnivorous fish can eat anything from aquatic plants to insects, worms, and lava. All right, let's keep moving. The linnick. So a fish that, again, is found at Tunguska, among other places in RF4. Sorry I'm comparing it so much to RF4, but, again, that's what I know a lot about and um, have spent a lot of time playing. And this map, frankly, is just in the part of the world that shares a lot of uh, DNA with, with RF4. So this has grasshoppers and dragonflies listed as preferred baits, as well as bark beetle larva, nightcrawler, uh, small minnows again, and common minnows, as well as shiners. And then some of the same lures we've been seeing on other fish as well. The spoons, uh, the mini crank is there as well. Some soft baits, poppers, walkers. So linnick, we can get the unique linnick. That could be a fun fish to catch here. Northern pike, which of course have been all over. Fishing Planet and other fishing games, uh, very popular fish, small minnows, shiners. So that's my question is if you throw in small minnows, according to where you are, are you going to end up catching a lot of pike? Or are you going to have a good chance of catching some of those other species as well? And then you can see the list here of preferred lures. If you've played Fishing Planet before, you've probably caught northern pike before. And here is the uh, really the star of the map, I would assume. If you're coming to this map, you may at least have an eye on wanting to catch the Timon, especially if you're into spin fishing. Now, this does say large minnows, common sh uh, minnows, and shiners. So I'm curious if we find a good Timon spot, could we catch them on not only our spinning setup, but have two or three or four feeders in there and, and really try to farm some Timon? I don't know. But we're looking at medium spoon, single spoon, bullet spinner, crankbaits, minnows, mouse lure, which if, again, I can't remember. I feel like mouse lures might be new to this expansion, this DLC. 
Um, but I could be totally wrong, I, but I just, that's the feeling I have. I know it's a part of the DLC pack and I already looked in the shop uh, and they are there. The good news is if you're high enough level to go to this map, you're high enough level to at least purchase the lowest, the smaller size mouse lure. We'll, sh we'll look at that in a second. Poppers, walkers, soft baits with shads. And notice that you can catch up to a unique size Tymon. Now, if Tymon have been in the game before this, I apologize. I, I just can't think of where they would have been. Like I checked Tuba. Uh, I checked other, I, I just, I think this is the first time we've seen Tymon, but um, I could be wrong. I guess I could look at the actual DLC page and I'm sure they will mention whether it's new or not. Um, so it says that it inhabits the cold rivers, of si cold rivers of Siberia and Mongolia, never goes out to sea, keeps near holes close to the shore. So when we're looking at the map, we want to think about this. Holes, so a little bit deeper areas, but that are still close to the shore. It's active day and night. Daytime is going to be in shaded areas. So it stays in a little bit deeper area or underneath a shaded area. And then in the, and then in the night, it moves to nearby shallows with a fast current. At dawn, it hunts very noisily for small fish on the rifles. Or is it riffles? An adult time and feeds on small fish. Starving individuals often attack chicks, frogs, mice, squirrels, and various waterfowl. Now that is interesting. All right, so that is the fish species that we have for the Salonga River here in Mongolia. So let's look at the shop. Um, I don't know the uh, inventory well enough to tell you like, oh, this is definitely new. I will highlight what's in the DLC pack in the next video. I did want to just mention, like I said before, the topwater lures, if you go to the last page here, at level 49, I thought it was 48. Yes, at level 48, well, let's see here. That is for coins, real money coins. So the first time you can purchase a mouse lure for in-game currency is at level 49. And you can get that one for 5,450. That's a 14 gram mouse lure um, with a two odd hook. So a pretty good size hook. At 53, you can get the 21 gram. And then at 55 and 56, you can get the larger, no, sorry, forget the 55. At 56, you can get the 36 gram. And then I guess the highest level one is gonna be the 48 gram with a seven odd hook you have to be level 59. Presumably that's gonna catch the largest ones. But I do think, again, these kind of things come in the DLC, so that'll be interesting as well um, to take a look at that. If we were gonna fish right now, I would go ahead and purchase one, but I don't think we're gonna do any fishing. I think we're just gonna look briefly at the map and then that'll be it. All right, so let's go ahead and, um, we don't even need to buy the license because we're just gonna walk around. Let's go check out the map to see what it looks like. Because again, I think I'm going to end up doing a video going over the DLC. And if we have the DLC, then we're going to have free travel and license and all that um, for, uh, for the next week or whatever. So, And here's the pack that I'm talking about. We'll go over the value of that pack uh, momentarily. All right, so let's take, take a look at the di different places we have. Uh, Tom Gall, Tom Gall, Tom Gall. Uh, Eastern Bank surrounded by two narrow distributaries of the river um, means big fire in Mongolian the local waters teem with fish and have long been a favorite spot of the locals this small pebbled open space is surrounded by a sparse forest there's a large fire pit in the center of the clearing people come here often this quiet and peaceful place literally invites you to sit down by the fire warm up and rest watching the flow of the river enjoying the sounds of nature after a good catch so I don't know if it's gonna be the best fishing but it's uh, it's a place Nomadic camp. It's on the western bank, the traditional life of local nomadic tribes. Okay, that might visually be cool to look for, look at. Several frame yurts. Uh, life is in full swing. Horses neigh and snort. Dogs bark. Voices ring. Behind a small fence, several two-humped camels are standing calmly. A flock of sheep is grazing freely in the distance, and a step eagle is soaring in the sky. So lots of lots of life here. Uh, great addition to your main goal here, fishing. So again, doesn't say a lot about what you can catch there, but all right, here's the island, Tymon Island. So I'm guessing this is maybe the starting point if you're trying to catch Tymon, I don't know. Large pebbled island in the middle of the river has been a favorite spot 
uh, to anchor their boats. Here you can launch your favorite kayak and finally fish from the water. The center of the island is overgrown with low dense willows among which several taller trees grow. The locals know that this is the place frequented by the king of all Looks like maybe the only thing we can use here are kayaks, which frankly I'm okay with. That's fine. Um, we'll see if that's actually the case. All right, let's look at the last place. We, this is the fourth and last place, the ancient hitching post. At the foot of the hill on the western bank of the uh, Salange, uh, I'm already forgetting how to say it, where during some dry summers it was possible to cross the river on horseback, uh, one can find ritual hitching posts. These three section carved wooden pillars were once a sign that his, that this land had an owner and were associated with the cult of the horse. Their upper part was intended for celestial horses, the middle one for human ones, and the lower one for the horses of the underworld. Here you will find many thousand year old ritual structures. Um, so, okay, that's interesting. Again, not a lot of information other than time and island, not a lot of information about, um, what fish are really like going to be featured at each area, but I guess that's something that we will have to uh, have to explore ourselves. Um, I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of time playing this game because I can't hardly remember how to play it. Oh, it looks like we do get to use our big boat. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so this is Time and Island. We kind of take a look around here. We do have the kayak available as well, uh, but we've got our boat. So if we pull up the map. Um, we are right here. So this is the island we're on, I guess. And there's sort of water all around us. Looks pretty cool. Oh, I need to cancel that mission. I, I've been working on missions off and on, and I guess I've got one for Everglades Trial. <laughs> I need to get that one off of there. Yeah, so it looks like, let's confirm that we can actually, um that we can actually get on our boat here. Um, they really want us to buy a, to buy a boat, uh, to buy a license. Oh man, let's see. Why can't I remember how to, um, E starts the, yeah, 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 there we go. Okay, I got it. Yeah, so we can straight up drive the boat around here. Um, that's cool. And then we can go into navigational mode. And I believe you can still fish while you're while you're in navigational mode. So yeah, like we should be able to we should be able to do this. So this may be the way to go for. Um, go for the time and at least a little bit more safely if you're able to be in your boat uh, of course there's no rod rod holders in the boat that's not a part of uh, fishing planets DNA at this point but um, that would be cool if there were so full boat access it looks like just kind of check out what these different places look like so this was over here at the ancient hitching post here's the, uh, the post they were talking about I guess Get a little good luck. So yeah, it'll just be interesting to see. Current seems to be a little bit maybe smaller over here, shorter, like, no, maybe not. It is still moving, isn't it? So there's a lot to sort of experiment. Let's check, check out the nomadic camp. This, um, this got all the wildlife and evidence of the village and all that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm intrigued. I mean, obviously the important part will be how's the fishing and we'll have to wait till the next little bit later to figure that out. I actually haven't, this is the first time I've been here. I haven't fished in this new river at all, but I kind of wanted to save it for, uh, for video. We'll kind of just dis discover things together. And finally, the very first place we looked at was this Tom, Tom Gall place. And this is where you just come to chill after a long day of fishing. Although there could be some good fishing here. Yeah, we'll have a lot to try. Okay, so there you have it. There is the introduction to the new river in Fishing Planet. I look forward to trying this out. I think the first thing the first thing that I will do after this video is take a look at the DLC, kind of do the D overview of the DLC. 
Um, so I'll try to link that to this video once it's up. But as always, thanks for watching. If you've had a chance to fish the new river already, let me know what you think. How are the timing? How are the other fish? Um, I'll try to do some experimentation, especially with bottom fishing. But we'll see how it goes. As always, thanks for watching.